If you're in your 40s, you've come to the right place. Don't forget to pick up my new book, Your First Million. We really can spend an hour or less together right now and get you very far. So stick with me throughout the entire video. I encourage you to watch all of it and take that initiative because if you don't uh, take the initiative, nothing that I teach you will help. So let's buckle in. So I want you to first determine where you are today. That's the first step. Uh, if you have, if you like journals like I do, or if you have a, an open draft in your email or however you want to do this, you're going to set aside some time in the very near future, today, tomorrow, try to do it soon so that you do it. And you're going to personally on your own by yourself, take stock of your life. Take stock of where you are today. What is your job look like right now? What is your role? What does your career look like if you have one? If you're an entrepreneur and you do not have a job somewhere, what does that look like? What's the health or the status of your company? What is your net worth, right? Your, your assets minus your liabilities. Where, where does your net worth stand? And there are some calculators and things online that can actually help you with that if you don't know it. If you don't have an accountant or a CPA, someone who can help you with that. It's a good idea to know that every year and know notice how it changes or not. And then what is your income, your salary, any kind of commissions, bonuses, anything coming in from other places, residuals, et cetera. And what are your expenses? Now this part is gonna be the toughest to look at, but even just doing this exercise and believe me, every step that I give you has to do with the last step. Even this exercise, I think, will be enlightening to a lot of people because we don't often do this type of diagnostic. We do it for our cars. We do it for our filters at home, our air conditioning filters. We do it for our health, hopefully. But we don't necessarily do it for our finances and the health of the ecosystem of our of our worth, our net worth when it comes to money. We know our worth internally is worth way more than that and it has no number. So you're going to take this diagnostic and the very next thing you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, why did I click on this video? Hopefully you're still here and you're asking yourself that in a good way. But why did I click on this video? It's probably the next part of the answer is because I want a million dollars. If it's that, put that in the comments right now because I want a million dollars, or at least that's what you thought. But here's where I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to challenge you. Why do you want a million dollars? Why? Why that amount? Why that number? What does it help you achieve? What does it help you get, get out of? right? Debt, a pickle, uh, stress. Why do you want $1 million? This part cannot be skipped. If you're going to skip this part, you might as well not watch the rest of the video. Because if you do not know why you are wanting to achieve a goal, you more than likely will not achieve that goal. Or when you do, it will be hollow. So this is going to fill the goal with life and purpose and intention. Now, if you're not familiar with my story, I was homeless about a decade ago. And today I've invested in more than 200 companies led by women, BIPOC and LGBTQ founders. I've also started a few companies. Some have done well, some have not. I've also spoken all over the world and I get paid to speak. And I have two books, as I mentioned earlier, I have two books that are out on a major publisher. And I've had a lot, a lot of losses as well, a lot of losses. And I stay pretty close to the bone when it comes to finances, because I'm always pouring things back in for the big, big payoff. And so I want to, I said all that to let you know that I know of which I speak. If I had no purpose and compass years ago when I was sleeping on the floor of the San Francisco airport, 
not knowing when my next meal would come. If I had no purpose and a destination in mind and a why, I would not be sitting here today for multiple reasons. And so I wanted to make sure that that was top of mind for you. So write it down. Write it down. If you do, if you dare, put it on your, your office wall, put it on put it on your phone. I say in my first book, It's About Damn Time, which is right here on my bookshelf. It's called It's About Damn Time. That's my first book. I say write your own headlines. If you're interested in what that means, download the audio version of It's About Damn Time and uh, listen to it. But you're going to write your own headlines. And I teach you exactly how to do that in this book. And then you're going to make a decision about when. So you have your why. You kind of have your what to what things look like. And then you can ask yourself when. When do you want this by? I recently did a video that was how to make $1 million in 36 months. I know that some people have a goal of 10 years or by a certain age or by a certain life uh, uh, milestone. Some people wanted it yesterday. Some people want it tomorrow. You're going to determine why for the same reasons as the why. You're going to win as for the same reasons as the why because you need that direction, that compass, that purpose because we're going to fill you with fuel in this video you're going to have the tools you need and the fuel you need but if you have fuel without direction you're spinning in the comments right now if you're with me right now let me know so that i know because when i film these i actually imagine you i imagine you in a classroom or in a room just chopping it up over dinner or something and I imagine how certain things might be hitting you where you have these light bulb moments. So if you're having any light bulb moments throughout this video, let me know in the comments. And you can comment more than once. I look at every single comment myself before I let it go on to the site because, uh, you know, the internet is crazy. <laughs> so I will see your comment. Again, for the 40, your 40s are a special time. And... It's important that you make a de another decision. A lot of what I teach is about putting decisions into your own hands. And a lot of what we don't realize when we don't have a lot, and I'm not saying you don't, I'm just saying in my experience, is that life is just a series of really you know, important decisions every once in a while and some not so important ones in the middle. So your next decision is how long, and I have it written, so I'm going to read it, uh, I hope to translate my own handwriting. How long can your current circumstances make you happy? How long can your current circumstances fulfill you? Think about that question. Pause this right now and think about that question. You might be in a really great place right now, and I hope you are. I wish that for you. And that answer may be, hey, forever, because this feels really good finally found my place if you're not there or if it's kind of complacent it could be better I need you to know that about yourself I need you to, to discover that about yourself today and then the question is especially if it's not where you want it to be and your circumstances are not what you want them to be what are you going to do about it what are you willing to do to change your circumstances if you want to change them. Today, I feel um, very, I feel wiser at 40. I feel more confident. I feel more strong. I have more fun. I imagine my 50s will be similar and maybe even better. We'll see. If you're in your 50s, just leave a comment and let us all know what that's like or even uh, older than that, 60s, 70s, 80s. Let us know what it's like on that side. It's also uh, half of your life for most of us, maybe maybe a third. You know, by the time we get to our 80s, there's so much more that could have happened in technology. And I hope that we, these youngsters and I, and, and us, I hope we figure out uh, very quickly a lot of things um, to keep us going in this planet, the spinning ball. But it's half your life, give or take. And 
And we can have a midlife crisis or you can have a midlife Christmas. <laughs> midlife crisis or midlife cri Christmas. If you like the midlife Christmas, hit the like button right now if you haven't already. Don't unlike it, but hit the like button if you haven't liked it or hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Definitely subscribe, by the way. If you're still listening to me and you're going to ride with me through this whole video, it's so helpful to get a, subscri a subscriber. It pushes the video out to YouTube more and more people get to see the video. And I put so much into these videos that I want more people to see it, plain and simple. Um, so it helps me. It, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed when you subscribe. Don't unsubscribe and then resubscribe because that's actually a negative effect. I had somebody tell me they did that and they were happy about it. That's actually bad. So subscribe if, if you're still here and you're getting any value from this so far. Next, now this is where we're going to get into some tactical things, okay? Some tactical things. In your 40s, after you've done this diagnostic, you know where you are, you know where you stand, you know where you want to go. Your job now, because you're in your 40s, is you are now going to become or continue to be, in most cases, a problem solver. Your job is to solve people's problems who have money to spend. Again, you don't have to be 40 to have that be the case, but in your 40s is when you have an incredible amount of ability and agility. You have so much wisdom and so much energy and, and, and decades of your life to look forward to. And you can imagine, you can see with your mind's eye where you want to be. So in sales, presenting solutions, that term is a actual key factor to closing deals. I've negotiated so many deals. Um, I've raised more than $30 million in the last decade across thousands of different uh, conversations. So I've had to have a lot of build, a lot of sales skills and negotiation skills. <clears throat> and having a, a solution for people, not just as your offer, but as your conversation, as part of your conversation, um, it helps you get across the line. So what you're going to do is you are going to become a major problem solver for a few wealthy or uh, highly financed people. When I say people, what I mean by that is that in the United States, there are about 260 million adults. Do you know what it is to be in the 1%? When we say we're in the 1%, you probably do. But in case you don't, I don't know this at any given time. I had to look it up. I used to know it, but then it changes, right? To be in the 1%, we call this group, and it always seems like it's like, oh, you're in the 1%, you're very wealthy. It is wealthy, but it, the number might surprise you. Type the number in the comments if, if, you're, if this is surprising to you. It's $680,000 or so. It's actually 682000 To make that amount or more in the United States... You're in the 1%. Um, and that's as a household as well. That's as, as a household. So you may be in that position right now. If you are, congratulations. You may not. You may be close to it or, you know, just doing well. But people, there are 1%. This is 1%. So if there are 260 million adults. That means 2.5 million or so, give or take fall into that category of I'm a one percenter. You want to find a problem that they have and become a problem solver for them. The reason you want to do this, I talk about, ooh, I talk about this a lot in other videos about selling to rich people or said another way, not selling to broke people. Now, you don't have to sell to rich people to make it happen, but the richer your audience and your customers are, the less, the fewer customers you have to have. So it's your decision. There's no right or wrong. 
It's just your decision of how many sales you want to have to do. If you think about that, think about people who sell cars, people who sell planes, people who sell uh, vacations. Think about that and what someone is willing to pay. I bet there's something that you're willing to pay more for than the, the average person because it's that thing that gives you comfort. For me, I would probably say hotels. Because I used to be homeless, comfort and luxury are really important to me when I travel and I travel a lot. I have very few clothing options. I don't splurge there. I do splurge on purple shoes, but they're usually less than $100 each because I like purple shoes and that's what I do. But I will spend more money, an outsized amount of money on a hotel for one night compared to what you're really getting because I want that for myself. And, I'm, and we're in our 40s, so we're grown, we can do that. What is that for your customer? And it doesn't have to be a thing, an object, something of luxury. It could be a problem that you're solving for them. So that's what I want you to think about. No matter what your job is or your career is right now, or even if you want to stay in your career, you're thinking about what part, how do I think of it in those terms? Now, I'm talking about individuals, but I, you can also decide, because remember, this is in your hands. You can also decide to have companies as your customer, companies that can afford you. I don't mean startups because most startups, and it sort of depends on what you what stage you're in, but a lot of startups don't have a lot of money to spend. Now, if you can find a problem that every startup needs to solve in order to be in business, then that's another story. That's another story. But in general, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Inc. 5000 list. Inc. 5000 list. Have you heard of this? Have you ever been on it? Have you ever had someone you know, you know on it? The Inc. 5000 are what are considered the fastest growing companies. And they use a three-year period to measure that. And people get plaques and they, they post it on their, their, in their offices if they get it. They talk about it. It's, it's a big deal to them. 5,000 companies that are vetted as being fast growth companies. And usually that means because of revenue or in other things. I'm going to go to that list. <laughs> you're going to look that list up and you're going to start working that list. Now, this is not going to happen overnight. You're going to have a process and that's why I have all these videos that teach you all the step-by-steps. But this is what I mean. This is how you're making your million dollars. This is how you're going from working for someone else or working on your own company, company but it's not really moving to get a million dollars. I always say that if you're stuck, if you're stuck in your company, if you have a if you have a product, a physical product, or even a, a, a digital product, you can turn that product into a service and shake things up a little bit. And if you have a service, you can change that service into a product or create a product out of that or create a service, right? And shake things up. That has always helped me when I get really stuck. I go, like, this is not working. Either it's not selling or it's not resonating or I don't like it or the customers aren't right. How can you take a product and turn it into a service or spin off a service from it or take a service and spin off some sort of product? Again, physical or digital. That's one way to think about it. A second way to think about it is if you're stuck and you are working with individuals, individual entrepreneurs, et cetera. How can you switch that to working with businesses? And entrepreneurs have businesses, but entrepreneurs usually don't have a lot of money, disposable income. So if you're having trouble selling your product or service to entrepreneurs, even though you feel a lot of entrepreneurs could use it, it's because you're talking to the wrong customer base. They can't afford you. Or if they can't afford you, they have too many decisions they have to make where it is not an easy decision to point in your direction. You want a no friction, no stress decision. 
And the key to this is that when you do this, when you find the right customer and they pay you well, you can then do whatever you want with that money and with your time. And that means that you can then work with others that can't afford you any way you want. You can discount them, or get, give them a discount. You can do things for free. You can do things in groups. You're going to hold on and be and, and be, be very uh, passionate about your time, ruthless with your time even. But you're going to be able to do things out of the goodness of your heart. The The way you you don't win in that situation is you try to keep selling to broke people because you want to be a good person and then nobody can afford you. You don't get paid. You shut down and nobody wins. Charge a, the right amount for what you do, for, for, the, for the, the solution you are providing and go after people who can afford that amount. So not the other way around. That's how people mostly price they decide, okay, I'm going to charge. I'm going to, what, what can my customer afford? Okay, they can afford $99 a month. So I'm going to do that. Then most of them, even if they can't afford that, don't spend it on that because they need to spend, if they can only afford $99 a month, they're spending that somewhere else. So instead of that, you say, what is this worth? Well, it's worth $2,000. So that's what I'm going to price it at. The people I'm talking to can't afford it. I need to talk to, diff to some different people. Put in the comments if you're learning something right now. If something is a light bulb moment, make sure you like and subscribe to help amplify this video for me. I really would appreciate it. That's the only thing I want back in return, if you, if you can call it that. Okay? So you're either going to go to Inc. 5000 or other places to find companies. You're going to go local. You can go local. Listen, in your town where you live, there are hundreds and hundreds of companies that need what you have. My friend Lamar Tyler says the money you're looking for is in the room, is in this room, right? The, it's in your city. And it's a question of, are you going to get it or somebody else going to get it? Simple as that. Now, pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, what is that problem you can solve? You don't have to decide today, but remember, we're going to start thinking about this as soon as possible. Hopefully now, hopefully you've been doing it along the way, pausing me, rewinding, hopefully. And you're going to decide. When you're going out to sell to people, because um, sales is just so important just in general to know that skill. Remember I said earlier that I've had to sell for you know to thousands of people and you're going to have a low percentage point of conversion. That's another reason that having a higher price point is important because if you have a low percentage point of conversion, which is most people, that means that you're going to have to go to even more people or be in front of even more people to even break even. You want every time you have a conversion, there to be some, some real cash machine sounds going off in your head. People are wiring four, five, six figures to you. And you can do this. When you're going to, when you do have these conversations, you're going to prepare personalized pitches when you, when you reach out to them. You want to be prepared. Now, when I was in my tw uh, early 30s, in my very early 30s, I wanted to be on the road and I wanted to go out on tour with musicians. And I had already done that with indie musicians, but I wanted to make it a living. So I wrote 100 individual emails to 100 tour and production managers, and each of them were customized. It took me two months to do this. And I was very broke because I've been broke a lot. It took me two months to do this. I would send some out, you know, on this day and then research and send some else. I got 20 responses, 20% 20 conversion of responses. I got three in-person meetings and I got one international tour that I went on for two years with a celebrity artist. And then from there, more happened. Now, it wasn't always, it wasn't a hockey stick. <laughs> had to fall back down and do it again. But that's the skill I had was I could do it again. So you're going to personalize these, this. When you're thinking like, you might be thinking, well, how, did, how do I? Okay, I know to identify 
people who can afford me, but how do I get them to say yes? But you're going to make it personalized. This is why this video is for people in their 40s. Because you have these skills that you can use for this. You have, um, I wrote down 10 things that people in their 40s have that are special. Confidence, and maybe you don't, but these, these maybe you don't feel like you have confidence, but do you have more confidence than you did in your 20s? That's a way to measure it. Experience, built-in networks, more financial stability, hopefully. I mean, again, you may not feel like you're there yet, but are you better than you were in your 20s? Resilience. Clarity of purpose. Problem-solving skills. Time and risk management and decades to enjoy the fruit of your labor. And there's more. I want you to, we are getting right to the core of this. There's more to this. So you have those things. And so you're going to use that experience and that confidence to become also, in addition to a problem solver, in addition to someone who can close a deal, in order to become that, you're going to become a storyteller. I've told you a couple of stories in this in this video alone. I have thousands of them to pull from. I have so many in this book. If you want to know how to be a storyteller, just read this book or read It's About Damn Time, the first book I put out. I'm a storyteller. And I have so many things I can pull from at this point. Uh, it's been a wild ride, but you do too. You have stories to tell. And those stories can help shape your offer and your and your pitch to people. So you're going to start practicing that. And before you say, I don't know how to do that. I'm not a good storyteller. I don't like to speak in public. I don't like to be on camera. I don't like to interview. I get too nervous. Understood. I had incredible stage fright until I was 37 years old. Like, I, I won't even get into how much stage fright I had. And now I speak on stages across the world. It's a longer story as to how, again, in this book, <laughs> wait, in, in this book, it's about damn time. I tell a whole chapter about it. But what is worth being a millionaire? Not j just with your first million, because this is going to be gross uh, million, which won't make you a millionaire yet, but it'll put you on your path to being a millionaire. What is worth that? You're going to do it with integrity and you're going to, with morality and high quality. But what is, what is worth becoming a millionaire to you? I would hope that time and effort and a little bit of putting yourself out of your comfort zone is worth that. If it is not, I'm not judging you and you should not feel shame. But I just want you to think about it and consider it. What is, a, what is between you and your first million, right? What is between you and your first million? Continue to leave comments for me. Let me know what you're thinking as if we're in a chat room or something, because I want to know, is this resonating for you? Do I need to keep making these videos? Is it working? Is it helping? Now on your pricing, what did we learn and what are we going to do? We're not going to sell to broke people because it helps everybody involved if we price ourselves correctly and if we go to customers who can afford those pricing that pricing you're doing it for the people who can't what does a million dollars break down to a million dollars and write this down too if you're writing a million dollars how do you get a million dollars well again you had decided earlier in this video how long you wanted to take is it a year is it three years five ten twenty it does there's no wrong answer it's just the answer that you want. Now, remember, if you do it in shorter time, collapse time, you become wealthier faster. Sounds simple, but we always think, oh, that's for another time in our life. That's when we retire. That's when we win the lottery. That's when this and this and this and these things align. It can be next year if you want it to be. It can be next year that you make a million dollars if you want it to be. I'm getting through to, to someone right now. 
and I know it. So what is a million dollars? A million dollars is selling a thousand things, offers, or things, products, services, for to a thousand, four thousand dollars. So a thousand for a thousand. It's selling 100 things or services for $10,000. Or it's selling 10 things for $100,000. So when you think 100,000, think um, a company where you're doing something where they're paying you 8,000 a month to do it. And they're on a contract. And you have 10 of those clients. And it's also one times one million. So there will be people who make a million dollars by selling one thing for one million dollars. Tell me about it when you do it. A um, hundred thousand. I've done that. I've done that this year. I've done that more than once this year. 10,000, done that a few dozen times in the last 12 months. The 1,000, lost count. That's not to brag, even though I don't mind bragging. I think bragging is good for us Black women. We need to brag more and good for women in general. Let's brag more, brag. But I don't say it to brag in this case. I say it to say, imagine me 10 years ago sleeping on the floor of an airport, and as I say in it's about damn time and in your first million. I'm using my jeans as a pillow. I don't have money for food most of the time. My aunt, my mom, my friends, they're sending me dollars on PayPal and upping this green card and, you know, those green dot cards. They're putting $5 on it and $3 on this so I can eat. I'm a raging alcoholic at that point. I'm not anymore. I've been sober. This book helped me get sober. It's called This Naked Mind. But at that point, I was a raging alcoholic. So I was having withdrawal and I was choosing alcohol over food sometimes. It was, it was terrible. But what did I just say just a couple of minutes ago? Rewind it. What did I say that I've done? Do those numbers. Run those numbers back. You can do it. You're not going to do it the way I did. You're not going to do the exact same path that I did but you can do it it is not impossible for you to do and over the years I've had countless people tell me that they have done something similar where they watched me speak at an event or they read my first book or they even read my second book recently they read something about me in a magazine they saw me on a tv show and then they acted, and then things changed for them. And then I have more people who say, I don't know how to do this. I'll never get there. I don't have this resource. I don't know what you mean by that. So I'm giving up. And that's it. And I don't want you to be in that position. I know what it's like to be depressed and I know what it's like to be hopeless. And I know that sometimes, some days, things do not resonate, even if you want them to. So if you're feeling that way today and you just can't do it yet, I want you to bookmark this video and come back to it. Promise me you'll come back to it another time. And if you're ready to go, you owe it to yourself to go now. Let me tell you what your next steps are. Are you ready for your next steps? Your next steps are you going to make some decisions. And if you forgot the decisions, play this back again. You're going to make those decisions. You're going to plan. Step two, you're going to plan. You're going to put some plans in order. And you don't, by the way, have to tell anybody in your family about these plans unless you want to. They can be your plans. If you are around people who... S on your plans, <laughs> who say you can't do something or laugh at you or chuckle or allude to the fact that that's impossible. The word impossible comes out of their mouth. Why would you want to share your plans with them? They're obviously not on your level. You can love them. 
You can care for them and about them and they can still not be on your level though. You don't have to share that with them. If someone is telling you in your family or your friend group that you can't do it, they're not vibrating on the same level as you are. So it doesn't really matter what they're saying. It's noise. So you can have all of this to yourself. Hope you have headphones in and you're just rocking this. This is all you. And then when you make something of it, you can decide if you want to share with them or kick rocks. If you want to splash them with your yacht water or if you want to <laughs> keep it moving, right? Yacht water, by the way, is my new water brand. Check it out, yachtwater.com. Let them know. Okay. The next step is you're going to study. This is step three. You're going to study. So you are going to decide what is worth this goal. What are you willing to do for this goal? And one of those things has to be studying, has to be getting in. Do you understand how much I study? I study voraciously for hours and hours and hours a day. The people I know who are doing the best around me, who I'm chasing, they do that too. We never stop growing and studying. We're reading books. We're reading uh, news, insights, watching YouTube videos, going to conferences, buying courses, taking free courses, asking people things, like having conversations. Not just, what does this mean? Or, what? Don't, do, don't ask people things that you can Google or that you can look up on YouTube. Look up the things on YouTube that you're curious about, learn something about it, and then find somebody who does that already or has done that and ask smarter questions. And then you're in your 40s. I know you're there. You know, we can, we can talk to the youngsters about this, but you're going to study. You're going to become money. I talk about becoming money and it's about damn time. It's about damn time I talk about becoming money. That's another chapter. Pick it up. Both of these books, by the way, are available in audio. I read the audio five or six hours each. Speed me up. You got it. Next is you're going to improve. So you're studying so that you can improve. Stack skills, Improve on your sales skills, improve on your critical thinking, improve on your confidence, all the things I listed. If you're like, I'm not that, you're going to become it. You're going to become that. If you're still watching this video, let me know in the comments right now and, and, and be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself if you're still watching this video, because this is a lot of time to spend with me and to, to look at your life. And to make decisions for you and your family and to make your life better. That's not something that's just, you're not watching entertainment. This is something that's real. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm spending so much time on YouTube building this is because I know that if I had a chance to sit down with each of you and tell you this, you would just surpass everything that I've ever dreamed. And I don't have that ability, but maybe I can do it here. Maybe I can do it right here, you and me, watching these videos. I'm going to pour my heart into these videos, and you're going to watch them. And you're going to tell people about them. You're going to spread them and let people know, look, <laughs> this is what's, what we're going to do. This is what we're about. And to that end, you're going to buddy up. Your next step is you're going to buddy up. You're going to get, I said, don't have to tell your, your family or friends who are negative. But if you want to tell someone who is on that same grind as you about your plans, have them watch this video and the two of you, or even the five or six of you, if you do what I suggested in another video and you have a salon that meets every, every quarter, every month, you're going to have an accountability partner or partners. Because even if you don't have a co-founder and you decide to do like a consulting thing or 
you know, however you decide to do this or stay in your current job and just use what I've taught you in your current job. If you have somebody who, who is ride or die with you, who has very similar aspirations and who lights up when you tell them your wins, who doesn't suck that energy away from you, you're going to be two, three, four times more likely to succeed. So you're going to buddy up. You can even leave a comment below and say, hey, I don't know anybody. Is there anybody else who wants to buddy up with me? Be safe, right? Be safe, but I would suggest that. Then you're going to, this is kind of general. I mean, it's not general, but it's like, it's hard to quantify. But I want you to expand your mind and your horizons. Expand what you believe is possible. Expand what you believe is is even true about yourself. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set a timer. Let me get some yacht water real quick. You're going to set a timer. What do I mean by that? Just like when you're cooking or when you're racing or when you, you have a certain amount of time to do something, you set a timer for yourself. This one's going to be a theoretical timer that you're going to set and you're going to Set it soon. You're going to say, within X amount of time, I'm going to reach my next, my first big milestone. So it doesn't have to be, I'm going to reach a million dollars by this date. Although you can write your own headlines and that could be what your headline is. You could also say, I'm going to get my first $10,000 client within the next 90 days. I'm going to make $1,000 in revenue from something that is not my job before the year is up. I'm gonna reach 100,000, six figures by my birthday next year. Do it, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. And the next step is, and I have it written down here, is go, go, do it. Do not wait for someone else to come save you. Do not, you have everything you need, everything you need in this video, in this book, in this book, in yourself, in your own heart, in your own soul, you have everything you need. And I am rooting for you. And I hope, I hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. <clears throat> that you will like and subscribe before you leave. And tell other people about this. What decisions have you made for yourself today?